name is Norbert Rotenkirchen. I'm a flute player um, specialized on medieval flutes, and that's also the topic I want to talk about. It's not easy to define exactly what a medieval flute is. Um, it's basically the flute which is suitable for the demands uh, of um, medieval music in today's um, movement of historically informed performance practice for medieval music. That means it should play in the right tuning, in the Pythagorean tuning, and it should also um, be the instrument which is uh, documented on pictures or sculptures, descriptions, and in some very, very rare cases also as the instrument itself, that it survived. Not many instruments survived. Some bone flutes survived, fragments of um, wooden flutes, but that's already what it is. So the rest we have glass paintings of um, in churches, we have um, we have illustrations in books, we have um, descriptions of uh, flute players in texts. And um, so that's basically it. Um, but um, this uh, fate we share with many other instruments from ancient times. So, um, as I said, it's not very easy to define um, any medieval instrument in comparison to later epochs. For example, in a late Baroque um, a period you can clearly find and define a harpsichord of a certain city even and a certain maker. Um, this is much more difficult the more far we go back in time. And um, medieval period is also a long um, epoch, so it's, it's a it's basically spanning a, a, a period over many, many centuries from, let's say, the 6th and 7th century to the 14th century. Um, this is a long, long period and it's impossible to, to talk about uh, medieval flute as a standardized um, instrument. But what we can say is that if there is kind of standardization, it is the kind of instrument we find also in ancient cultures and even today in, in many traditional cultures of traditional flute uh, playing. It's this kind of flute. It's a flute with a cylindrical um, form. Could be a kind of reed or bamboo or even a drilled wood. Um, we know that Romans could already drill wood, so it's uh, not nothing special. Uh, and this uh, kind of flute had six holes for the fingers. And we know that kind of flute already existed uh, in ancient times. In ancient Greece we find this um, kind of flute as a shepherd instrument. And in Roman times we also find it. We, we see it on, the, on pictures in the Byzantine court music. And um, this type survived basically until the Renaissance as the main universal type of flute. So let me show you one uh, one of the most famous forms of uh, Renaissance flute is a Raffi. Raffi was a famous maker in Italy. Raffi flute um, in the Renaissance. So this is a Raffi flute. And you, you see it's basically the same. Here we have a medieval generic flute uh, made by today's maker um, Jeff Barb, Jeff Barb in France, and uh, this one is made by the Berlin maker Neithard Pousset in our times, Neithard Pousset. So, but what are the distinctions, what are the differences between these two instruments? The one a medieval flute, or so-called medieval flute, the other one a Renaissance flute. As they look nearly the same, uh, it must be something else what makes them different. And that's what I want to talk about. The one thing is the intonation. The medieval music had another tuning system than the Renaissance. The Renaissance was a further development. It uh, already discovered the beauty of the third as um, a way to build three-part harmonies, which is the main 
technique now for our modern harmony system to have triads and so on. We all know that major triads, minor triads, and so on. This also uh, this relates to a. Um, um, early tuning system called mean tone temperament where the thirds were tuned on any instrument in a pure form but in the medieval times that was different the instruments were tuned in a way that the um, fourth and the fifths in the scale or also in any interval were tried to they tried to tune this in a pure way according to the overtone scale there you have the exact relations how to tune a, f a pure fourth and a pure fifth and the result was in in the scale if you have all the fourths and fifths tuned pure the thirds are too high the big thirds are too high for our modern ears or or, or for in a renaissance ear but not for the medieval ear because the fifth and fourth was more imp important so the third was a passing note. And let me show you on a medieval flute. Here you see the second hole. Uh, it's very big. That means if the, you have this as a, as a basic note, this is a high third, a uh, major third. And so this hole tells us this, this third is really high. So it wants to go on to the next, to the next note. It's a passing note or it's a dissonant note. So that's one main difference between a Renaissance flute and a medieval flute, that it doesn't have mean tone temperament. And if you take a Renaissance flute with perfectly tuned uh, thirds, it's not really convincing to play medieval music on it, unless you have an instrument where these notes are altered. The other... The other main difference is that a Renaissance instrument usually is uh, organized in groups, in families. Uh, it was called in consorts. So we know that from a modern choir, for example, you have sopran, alt, tenor, bass. So these uh, families of um, high, middle and low voices is um, together a consort and uh, this is a very renaissance way of organized um, uh, sounds and not so much medieval in medieval time it also existed that you combined um, high notes with middle middle range notes or even with bass notes but not so not so much with the thinking of a consort and um, and so we have less standardized um, groupings of instruments. So if you have flutes, there of course we find middle-sized flutes, we also find bass flutes or tiny little pipes, really um, high uh, instruments, but uh, they are not standardized. They were nearly never intended to be played as a group in, in medieval times. There is some amount of standardization starting in the early Renaissance and so there's um, a period of time where you cannot really say is it more medieval or already a renaissance. I want to show you some other medieval flutes. The one is, um, this one is by Boas Burney in Berlin. Uh, no, he is in Canada, but this flute is a, um, a copy of a flute in Berlin, which is a late medieval flute, maybe the only one we really got with existing wood. And um, Another flute maker in our times, which I like a lot, is Giovanni Tardino. He makes these generic um, um, medieval traverso flutes uh, with really nice Pythagorean tuning. So they're ready to go. And I, I use them a lot, especially for my Pied Piper program. It's very helpful to have a flute which is really um, ready to go. He plays the notes, the Pythagorean notes, where they have to be. Um, yeah, and um, but I also wanted to um, to show you that there is a way of flutes which is absolutely not standardized, which is um, yeah um, a kind of flute which is just there. Somebody took some material like bone or reed 
and cut some holes and you find a lot of traditional flutes like that. This is a bone flute um, by, made by uh, the late Friedrich von Hühne. He made some bone flutes for me for the work with Sequencia. And so this is a sheep bone and it just has four holes, four holes, which so it evidently it doesn't play in the, in the, in the lower register um, much more than five notes. Um, and um, this is a way also which can be found a lot in, in uh, medieval um, ruins and so they found um, remains of these kind of bone flutes or bone fragments. Apart from that, of course, bone flutes are the oldest um, instrument of mankind, um, but that is uh, another theme, that bone is a very durable material and so it, it uh, it's can survive many, many centuries and even much more, 30, 35,000 years, was in the case of the ne Neanderthal flute, but this is not a Neanderthal flute, so it's a medieval, yeah, non-standardized bone flute and there must have been a lot of these yeah and so if you compare this little bone flute to the modern flute which is a bone flute with clear uh, keys for any note uh, so to enable the, um, this instrument to play the chromatic scale in the whole range of the instrument with more or less the same sound quality and pitch correct uh, and pitch um, um, yeah, correct pitch. That's uh, a, a big um, development from here to here. And in the middle lies the universal type of uh, medieval flute. <laughs>